There's definitely something in there. How did they do it? headed to Bandelier National Monument. We've never been there before, so pretty excited to go check it out. Um, we did a lot of research online, and so it looks like a pretty cool place where there used to be like cave dwellings in the side of the mountain. And so we're gonna go check that out and see what it's all about. One thing that I really like about this particular park is the paved trail. So while that there are areas where there's some narrow places and some kind of stair step areas that um, you need to be in you know, decent physical shape to go up into the cave dwellings themselves, the main loop is paved, which makes great for if you have somebody that has accessibility issues or anything like that to be able to still enjoy this national park. Yeah. It does smell like that's crazy. <laughs> you know, over 500 years ago, you know, there's things, some pottery, but it's pretty cool. Those holes, Dakota, you can fit your hand right up in there. Yeah. Oh, wait. This one's way bigger. Oh. I heard they have snakes up in there. No! Literally? No, just kidding. Yeah, that's as far. That's as far as it can go. Okay. That's as far as it can go. Look, look how dusty it is in there. That's really dusty. My guess is where this door is. They probably hung some sort of like animal skin or something to kind of seal out the weather is my guess. Let me check if there's any. Do you know where the pool was? They were made, I'm sure that they would go out to go to the bathroom. I don't think. Yeah, like they're right here, but we can't go in them. Oh, there's no, there's not ladders. Hey, bud. Hey. There's a cave drawing just right up there. And I was like, you come see it? Yeah, show it to me. I don't think you can climb up in this. Oh, crap, I forgot where it was. It's just right next to this one. I think there's this one. Oh, oh, right here. Follow me, Dad. Um, You won't be able to get through here, I think. It's like rock climbing. So I think this would be their porch right here. So they could just sit, watch, watch like whatever's in that arena right there. Oh, jeez. Oh, there's definitely something in there. Like a dead body. Wow, this is where they used to live. Human presence in this area has been dated back to over 10,000 years ago. When walking along the main loop trail, you can see these archeological sites up close and personal. This piece of history really comes alive as you can just imagine what life would have been like for the Pueblo people living in these ancient dwellings thousands of years ago. I'm trying to get in here, you guys. I can. Oh my I'm trying to get in here. I wish I could come to the wall and jump in the Some trails are short, easy loops, while others are a little bit more challenging. The first section of this trail is a flat and easy walk. However, the second part of this trail contains areas with numerous stone stairways. There are guide rails which help in navigating the rough terrain. 
You can pick up a trail guide at the visitor center for $2 to learn more about the sites along the trail. A few things to keep in mind when hiking this rough terrain. Wearing sturdy closed toed shoes will help prevent slips and tripping. Make sure to bring along plenty of water to stay hydrated while hiking these trails. Bandelier is located in a very dry, high desert climate. Sunscreen is also recommended as the sun in New Mexico can be quite intense. While a challenging hike, these trails are a great way to explore the area and access the many cliffside dwellings and structures along the way. There are some areas if you want to go up and check the actual cliff dwellings that you need to climb a ladder and there are some really narrow stair areas, but in general, anybody could enjoy this national park because of the paved main loop trail that they can go on. So if you have somebody that has accessibility issues or anything like that, they can still participate and really enjoy this park. Bandelier National Monument protects over 33,000 acres of rugged but beautiful canyon and mesa country. The dramatic cliffs of Frijoles Canyon were created from the ash of massive volcanic eruptions. In New Mexico, more than one million years ago, huge volcanic explosions rained ash and cinders over a 1,500 square mile area. After the volcano emptied its magma chamber, it collapsed onto itself, leaving a circular depression called a caldera. Bandelier is located on the outer slope of this caldera, known as the Vallis Caldera. During the eruptions that form the Vallis Caldera, ash flows up to a thousand feet thick covered the landscape from the caldera rim to the Rio Grande. As the hot ash cooled, it welded into a rock called tuff. The dwellings were carved into the soft volcanic tuff walls of the canyon and are breathtaking to see up close. These rock cliffs and standing masonry walls pay tribute to the early days of the Pueblo people and culture. This culture still survives today in the surrounding communities of New Mexico. Many of these cliffside dwellings were built for defense. With the exception of hunting and growing food, all aspects of daily living could be performed from within the dwelling itself, which had only one way in and one way out. Almost three quarters of Bandelier National Monument is wilderness area. This climate provides for a rich variety of plant communities. Water, most in the form of winter snow or late summer afternoon thunderstorms, is a major key to the survival of the plant life here. A wet season or a series of wet seasons can spur the growth of plants not seen for years or even decades later. One of the things that really struck me was the sense of community. You can see in structures such as the Kiva, the community place of meeting, or the communal type structures called Pueblos, we could all learn a lesson from the ancient people that once lived here, that living and working in close community with others makes life better for all of us. Hey guys, welcome to Go Have Some Adventures. We got the session Hero 5, really good audio right now. 